Enter. <laughs> That's a pun. David in... Uh, I totally... Did that you miss one my went, pun? That went right over my head. Did I shrug I, I tried to have fountainhead one there. I, I blanked when I got to the end of that uh, sentence. Uh, but, but, I, but I did Atlas Shrugged. You did. Uh, David in Written. I'm going to say Written. Weight of the world on my shoulders on that one. <laughs> New Mexico, listening on 91.7 FM. Uh, David, uh, why are you not Catholic? Um, well, uh, actually, I was not born um, into a family that observed Catholicism. I was born into the Protestant church. Uh, well, born into a family that worshipped through the Protestant church. Okay. And, uh, some, yeah, some of, the, some of my friends that I've gone to funerals of, of parents, and their, you know, their parents, my coworkers' mm-hmm. parents, uh, some of my friends at at work are Catholic, and and you know what? <laughs> this is funny. I didn't call in to uh, fight over anything. I called in uh, to talk to my Christian uh, my 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 Christian brothers of the Catholic faith. Right? Hey, praise and God I for just, that. I, yeah, yeah, for sure. I just don't I don't understand the heavy weight that is placed upon the importance of Mary, and you know I. I know what Christ did for me. Now I may not know it in fullness, but I, I I know that there that I don't have eternity with God outside of what His Son did for me. I, I, that's the only way I'm going to have be in His presence for eternity if I so choose the sacrifice He made. And and when I I hear prayers now, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I I'll take all the corrections you got. Uh, I don't understand the prayers that mention Mary or maybe prayers to Mary. Um, if you if you would clarify that, um, I would appreciate it. You know, I'd love to hear your your viewpoint on that. Yes, okay. I'm so happy with that. That is such a a beautiful presentation, and praise God for your. It sounds like very genuine and humble love of Jesus Christ. And I think those are really good questions because it it gives me an opportunity to make sure that I clarify a couple things out the gate that sometimes okay. are misunderstood. So we don't worship Mary, right? Like, you didn't say that, but I want to make sure anyone listening doesn't, doesn't take away the wrong impression. When Protestants gotcha. talk about yeah. prayer, they tend to use prayer and worship interchangeably. Catholics use prayer in a broader sense. Prayer just means request. So asking an angel or a saint to pray for you is itself a prayer. It's, it's a request. But you're not giving them divine honor. You're not treating them as God or gods or anything like that. So that's the first thing, just to make sure, you know, that's what we don't. We don't believe that. There's an infinite chasm in the dignity of Mary, who is a perfect creature, we would argue, and her creator. Mary's a creature. God's her creator. And that gap is literally infinite in terms of the the dignity and, and you know, the difference between the two. And the Second Vatican Council talks about that. Like, you you can't conflate Mary's, like, the honor due Mary as as someone who's very holy and the honor due God as the the origin and source of infinite holiness. And, like, he is what holiness is. So all of that just is kind of preamble to say, well, why do we then care about Mary? Like, why why do we ask her for prayers? And one of the reasons we ask her for prayers is because we're supposed to ask everybody for prayers. You see St. Paul doing this. He asks his readers to pray for him. 1 Timothy 2, uh, verse 1, he encourages us to pray for everybody. Like, there's this notion that in the body of Christ, we build each other up by, by praying for one another. But we also have a special relationship with the Virgin Mary. And I would argue this special relationship, you can find it all throughout uh, Scripture. So really beginning all the way back in the book of Genesis. In Genesis 3, when we get to the curse of the serpent, there's a curse placed on the serpent that says it'll put enmity or strife or conflict between him and the woman, and between his seed and her seed. Now, uh, the seed of the woman, seed is normally measured through the man. The reason the seed of the woman is referred to there is because of the virgin birth. The seed of the woman is Jesus, because when we're told, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. But if the seed of the woman is Jesus, then it seems that in Genesis 3, verse 15, the woman referred to there is not actually Eve, the woman is Mary, and we get further support for that in the New Testament. For instance, at the wedding feast of Cana, when Jesus refers to Mary as woman. Uh, that's Eve's original name in the garden, if you go back to Genesis 2, and before her name is changed to Eve. So he seems to be drawing us back to Genesis 3.15. That this, you know, the conflict from Genesis 3 onwards, we're told, is going to be between the devil 
and the woman. Now, that's really fascinating because we would expect the conflict to be between just the devil and God or something like that. But this is, this is repeated throughout scripture. So, for instance, in Revelation chapter 12, there is an image of a woman enthroned in heaven who gives birth to Jesus. Now, the obvious reference there is that this woman is Mary. It could also be Israel. It could also be the church. It's a metaphorical image. But uh, nevertheless, there's this woman is in at war with the dragon, who we're told is the same dragon as the serpent in Genesis 1 to 3. And then uh, we're told in Revelation 12, verse 17, that the dragon was angry with the woman. Now, you, again, you, you might expect it to say the dragon was angry with God or angry with Jesus. It says the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus. So we're told there two things that really get to the heart of why we take Mary so seriously. Number one, the devil hates Mary. That's a good reason to like Mary. And number two, uh, Mary is the mother of all of those who hold to the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what we're told in Revelation 12, 17 in no ambiguous terms. Like those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus are the children of this woman enthroned in heaven. And so we honor her as our mother who is enthroned in heaven because that's what the Bible presents her as. But we don't honor her as like a fourth member of the Holy Trinity or anything. Does, does that make sense? Does that help? Well, well, it, it, it does to a degree, but you've got so much uh, angles to it that I can't keep up with all of it. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's cool. I mean, you, you described it as, as well as you know it, you know, as well as y'all understand it and preach it. So I appreciate the depth of yeah. it. Um, when, when, yeah, when you, <laughs> yeah, bear with me. So when you, when you say early on in the discussion that Mary is perfect, uh, you know, I, I, again, I'm not playing tit for tot, but the only one I thought was perfect was Jesus Christ. You know, because it, it, am, I, am I correct, guys, in that all that were born from Adam and Eve, we, we were born into a world full of sin. It is our choice to, to take Christ in place of that because of the sacrifice he made, because everyone from that seed was born into sin. It's just through the blood. But because the Holy Spirit used Mary... Um, um, if that's a good term, I don't know if that's the right ter- terminology, but, but, but he was the one that saw to it that she was not impregnated by man who was born of sin, but by the Holy Spirit. But she, she was born into, into a sinful world. And you, you follow what I'm saying? I, I so do. I, I, I yeah, yeah. So yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll sometimes yeah. find people who say that the reason Jesus doesn't have original sin is because of the virgin birth. And I, I don't... Uh-huh quite track with that theory because it would make the virgin birth necessary then rather than uh, kind of a super abundant miracle but that's another issue certainly you're right that left to just the course of nature mary was owed original sin like the idea of what's called the immaculate conception is not that mary somehow earned or merited being freed from sin but that through a special Uh grace she's preserved from all sin including original sin Uh, from the moment of her conception in the same way that like by the grace of God all of us although we merit hell uh, can be saved nevertheless that the same atoning death those graces that Christ wins for us uh, can be applied both in the past and in the future which is how you know the people who died before Jesus are still saved through the cross likewise Mary's uh, you know supernatural conception freedom from sin is still one through the cross. But then the question is, well, why? Like, why do we believe that? And the reason is because we think of Mary as like the Ark of the New Covenant. So you go back in 2 Samuel 6, and you've got David, it says he arose and went, and he goes into the hill country of Judah for three months, carrying the Ark of the Covenant and asking, how can the Ark of the Covenant, or how can the Ark of the Lord come to me? And then you contrast that with Luke 1, where it says Mary arose and went, and she goes into the hill country of Judah for three months, and Elizabeth says there, why is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, Luke is pretty explicitly, pretty consciously drawing a connection between 2 Samuel 6 and Luke 1. But in that comparison, Mary is standing in the place of the ark, and John the Baptist dances before the Lord just as David did. And there's a lot of parallels in this kind of account. So... All of that's to say, uh, just like the ark was totally pure and totally perfect because it was an abode, a tabernacle for the Lord, Mary, who carries Jesus in her womb, is preserved by a special grace, not because she didn't need a Savior, not because she merited it on her own, but because she's the ark of the new covenant. And so it was fitting that she should be a, a temple for the Lord. 
Interesting. That's very interesting. That's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, history there. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. there is, and and yeah. you know, Mariology. It's all it's a whole. There's a yeah, of course, a well developed Catholic theology around this, as well as there's a well developed Protestant theology around it. Uh, and so there's so much more that we can share. But I, I and I have to go to the break because I'm actually late for the break. But